What's up everyone? So a few days ago, that's like three days ago, I was invited to speak on an IG live, that's Instagram live on vaginal discharge and your fertility. So I was invited by a telemedicine app called Whisper app. It's a sexual education app and trust me guys, they talk a lot, they teach a lot on sexual education. So I was really excited to be a part of the live and I realized that I really enjoyed myself doing that live and it was really informative. So usually I don't post live on my channel but this is an exception because you need to listen to what we talked about. So I was invited by the founder slash CEO of Whisper Up. She's pharmacist Morenike for Jamie Sins. So we'll be talking all about vaginal discharge and your fertility. So I'm just going to play the video for those of you that missed the Instagram live and an important information. So I have now unlocked the YouTube live for my channel and I'm going to start my very first live video tomorrow, Sunday. So it's going to be like a weekly thing because it's really not easy to reply everybody's messages and trust me i want to reply every message i get in my mail in my dm on instagram facebook linkedin but because i'm just one person it's a bit uh hard to reply everybody so that's the whole idea of the youtube live i'm going to start every week so you send your messages as much as i can i would read them out and and respond on live video or better still if you have questions you come on the live and ask there and then and get real life real time answers to your questions i i feel like that would be even more interesting and faster so if you feel like you've sent messages in the past and have not responded i did not mean to ignore the message i probably did not see it or i felt i have responded or i'm still yet to get to it so maybe just join the live it's easier that way everybody gets their answers there and then but the truth is i'm not going to answer personal questions if you want to know something about a diagnosis or disease i'm going to answer that but no personal questions but if your personal questions is such that i can answer generally then fine i will do that on the live show so if you're new to my channel i'm dr amarachi ijoma i am a fertility physician and my channel focuses on everything women's health and fertility so if you want more content like this if you feel like my content is something you want to know more about please subscribe to my channel like this video and if you have any questions drop them below i'm always ready to respond to them going to be discussing vaginal discharge and uh, your fertility. Hi Dr. Marty, nice to have you. Hi, I'm Marenike. I'm happy to be here actually. Yeah. Okay, I'd like you to tell us, um, ask you a few questions. Uh, this is your first time on our Sex Ed 101. We're so happy yeah. to have you. Um, so yeah, we'll ask so you a few. Great. We'll ask you a few questions just answer freely enjoy yourself it's a chat okay. uh, anybody who has questions our doctor here is ready to deliver so um by way of introduction dr amarachi is a women's health doctor she's also a fertility doctor so that's why this topic is important so tag anyone you know who's trying to um conceive anyone you know who is interested in knowing more about how their virginity, uh, how their vaginal discharge, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> somehow Hi, fertility. Yeah. yeah. So let's let's go straight to it. Will you tell us a bit about the? You know, we're saying vaginal discharge. What's the vagina? I mean, I don't. Know. Oh, okay. Oh, true. Yeah, right. <laughs> okay, so the vagina is actually. A hollow organ it's a muscular hollow organ that is internal so it's inside you can't actually see it so you see that opening 
down there where the penis goes through enters penetrates that's actually the vaginal opening so the vagina is inside so what you're seeing and most likely called the uh, vagina is actually the vulva so there's actually a difference you are shaking this table oh. you know how everybody says <laughs> my vagina is spinning me my, my vagina, vagina is oh me. my oh, god from my vagina are you telling us that Egg... the vagina that's not the vagina it's totally not the vagina it's the vulva so <laughs> so you guys let's yeah. let's lesson number one it's called the vulva so mm -hmm. please keep going dr marachi okay so yeah so basically the vagina what it what it does is it receives the penis during sexual intercourse it collects the sperm it's till the sperm cells you know go up into the uterus that's the womb and all the way to the fallopian tube the vagina serves as a passageway for delivery for childbirth so when the child is coming out it has to pass through the vagina Okay. And it also serves as a passageway for menstrual blood. So your menstruation, your menstrual blood ha actually has to pass through the vagina to get out. So yeah, that's basically what the summary of what the vagina is. Okay, awesome. So thank you for that brief introduction. So I always take it from this um, point. We are talking about discharge, but we know, or most people have an idea that some types of discharge can be normal. Some might be abnormal. So before we even talk abnormal, what's normal? What what should we expect? Okay, so before I start saying what color is normal and what is not normal, you should know that everybody has different normals. Okay. So it could range from clear to creamy mm. to even milky. So okay. and it also and normal also changes during your cycle. So you can't say if you have a different look on a particular month time of your cycle mm -hmm. it is abnormal you can't really say that because it changes because of the different hormones that we have mm -hmm. so i'm going to like go like really in depth into normal vaginal discharge so that you don't get scared when you see some type of discharge and you think it's abnormal so i'll start mm -hmm. from like you know uh when you're ovulating so if you have like, if your vaginal discharge increases, if your vaginal discharge increases, becomes thinner, becomes stretchier, becomes really clear like um, egg white, raw egg white, mm. then check if you're around your ovulation period okay. and it's most likely ovulation discharge. And then if you're sexually aroused, it becomes much as well. It becomes much more than it will usually be yeah oh, okay. and it's yeah and then if it is if you're pregnant so pregnant women because of the physiological changes that they experience their discharge is usually more and then before your menstrual period you might notice that your discharge is slightly pinkish or mm -hmm. reddish just before your menstrual period and it's it's absolutely it can be absolutely normal mm -hmm. because i mean you're you're about to see your period but if you notice okay. this pinkish or reddish discharge and you're not about to see your period okay. well it could signify a bigger problem because there's something called spotting yeah okay. so spotting means you're done with your normal period and you're in the middle you're like you're not even close to your next period and then you're seeing reddish pinkish thing that okay. could also be spotting but if okay. you see it once well maybe there's nothing to worry about but if you see it um the next month the following month after that you keep spotting like seeing periods seeing um reddish discharge in the middle of your period then you should go see your doctor because it could signify something bigger okay also if you notice this reddish pinkish spots and you missed your period but yet it's not like the, the normal quantity of blood you will see during your menstruation mm. then it could be implantation bleeding it could mean that you're pregnant because sometimes women experience this reddish spotish 
discharge when the embryo has attached to the wall of the the inner wall of the womb. Okay. So you should do a pregnancy test. If it's negative, go and see your doctor. And then, so sometimes you have the brownish discharge, yeah? Okay. The brownish discharge can also be normal and is usually seen towards the end of your period. Because period. at this point, yeah, at this point, you're... Your, the blood is no longer flowing as much as it would in the first two, three days. Mm. So it's it's really like it stays like in your vagina before coming out. So it gets oxidized, darker. mixes with oxygen, gets mm. oxidized and becomes darker. So brownish discharge can actually also be normal discharge. Okay. So okay. I, I really hope. Okay, okay. And then the white discharge, yeah? Yes. So the white discharge. White. Yeah, it's it's just natural, you know, natural lubrication that the vagina has. Okay. It can be, you know, it can be, it can be, you know, vaginal discharge is normal, yeah, because some vaginal discharge are normal. And when they're white, different shades of white, it's just the vagina cleaning itself, really, you know, it's just... Okay taking out the dead vaginal cells, taking out, you know, sperm, blood after your menstruation, just cleaning the vagina. So that's what's like coming out as whitish, clear, creamy discharge. discharge. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So you've mentioned something about the vagina cleaning itself. You said that a number of times. Yeah. What does that mean? Yeah. And like, oh, so what it means, yeah, what it means is that the vagina is not a dirty place. I don't know why I smile whenever I say vagina. I think I have a thing for vaginas. Okay, so... We, all do. we, all do. we have one. Yeah, I know, right? So the vagina is not a dirty place, right? Because the vagina is cleans itself, basically. So there's, like, really no need for you to clean inside the vagina because like clean the mm -hmm. vagina rather because it's already like doing that by bringing out you know all of those dead cells and it's coming out as discharge mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. yeah that's what makes up that's the evidence that the vagina cleans itself that vaginal discharge that you're seeing so so the vaginal discharge is cleaning from where to where yeah, it's cleaning from like inside, like you know, the vagina literally ends around the cervix here, yeah? so okay. it actually has an end. So it's cleaning from the top. It's cleaning from the from the top. Yeah, and it's cleaning. You know, the the um the inside of the womb. That's the uterus. Okay. Like that's where the blood comes out from and everything. So when it's done with all of the menstruation, so the, you know, vagina the vagina is able to push it out. Yes, properly. actually, yes, and and all of that. Content. Perfect. All right, so thank you for clarifying. For those, I've tried to drop some of the comments for everyone to see on what normal discharge can look like. It can be white, it can be clear, it can be milky. And guess what? It can be brown. And that's normal and too. Especially when, or yeah. light pink, yes. Especially when you're either starting your period or ending your period. Okay, so now, what... Where does no when it comes to like fertility because Nigeria is a society where we are very you know interested in our ability to reproduce. So when it comes yeah. to fertility, are there any clues that the vagina? Ah, oh, sorry, <laughs> my battery. Are there any clues that the vagina can give us when it comes to fertility? Okay, so the the most important clue is. Wait, are you talking about like how can it affect fertility? No. Or... So in this case, just how can you know when it's a good time to to get so, pregnant? Oh, to come. Ah, okay. So yeah, that's when the vagina when the vaginal discharge becomes clear white, like raw egg whites, becomes mm -hmm. really thin and stretchy. Like when you put it on your hand, like this, it stretches all the way. So okay. that could that could give. You you an idea that you are ovulating it doesn't necessarily say you're ovulating but it gives you like a good idea that you're that it's ovulating, around that yes. period so it stretches yeah. almost like chewing gum yeah almost like chewing so you gum can like play you put it on your hand yes you can play with it. we've all i'm sure we've all experienced it at one time or the other so it's like a clue yeah. even for the guys 
if for some reason you've decided not to use a condom and your partner is not a contraceptive and her vaginal you know discharge is stretchy there's a good chance that junior is coming after that round so <laughs> you are in, in, in it's advisable to withdraw <laughs> take take yeah. a step back sorry somebody wants to join let's quickly see if we can add her in because we tend to have trouble adding people in sometimes all right okay um but let's move on until that works <laughs> okay so <laughs> okay what can make the vaginal discharge abnormal okay so or when they say abnormal discharge what what what's it what's it all about okay so abnormal discharge is any dis vaginal discharge that is not any of these colors that i have mentioned hmm. or some of these colors with associated with symptoms okay so that's when you're worried about your vaginal discharge but if you want to like talk about like the vaginal discharge colors you should really look out for and mm -hmm, you know know mm -hmm. that there's a it's a red flag then you're talking about the let me start from white because since we've already talked about white being normal, normal. white can also be abnormal so when white is really thick me, I like to use Habib yogurt too. I just hope I'm not spoiling Habib yogurt just for say anybody. Yogurt. <laughs> yeah. just say yogurt. Thick yogurt. Yeah, yogurt. Okay, yogurt. No, we know there are different types of yogurt, yeah? So thick, like thick Greek yogurt. yogurt. Greek yogurt. Ah, Let's use Greek perfect. yogurt. Since there's no brand. Okay, so yeah. That works. Okay, so Thank Greek you. yogurt. Yeah. So when the vaginal discharge is like Greek yogurt. It's not the really smooth Greek yogurt to the those thick. The if you know what one. cottage cheese, yes. If you know what cottage cheese is, so if you if if your whitish discharge oh. is like that clumpy, yes. Oh, you know word. you know the pap they give babies. That clumpy the pap they give babies. Oh, okay. You are not familiar with it. <laughs> oh, no, or, no. If, no. or if you stored pap in a container for a long time and it comes out in those thick. Ah. okay so <laughs> so yeah Both so anyone so you <laughs> you can relate with <laughs> right so when you have that kind of whitish discharge yeah then it could mean that maybe you're having like a fungal infection like um candidiasis oh, okay. so you especially when it's associated with itching and mm -hmm. maybe an unpleasant odor then yeah you could you should, you should see a doctor and then for abnormal discharge, let's talk about the yellow one. So when abnormal discharge is yellow, yeah, it could signify any of these sexually transmitted infections like trachomoniasis, Wait, when chlamydia, you say yellow, gonorrhea. you mean actual yellow? Actual yellow, yes. Yellow. It could be pale yellow. It could be actual yellow. It ranges from pale yellow to actual yellow to mm. greenish. So sometimes it's yellowish greenish. So okay. when you see like those kind of colors, then uh -huh. you could be looking at yeah as an alarm yeah because it, and especially when they're associated with burning sensation, itching, mm. unpleasant mm. odors, and all of that, it could be a sexually transmitted infection we are looking at. But the thing about those that yellowish discharge is that most sexually transmitted infections are asymptomatic, meaning that you might not have like any symptom at all. So when you have that discharge, that's enough reason for you to go and do like a test, an STI test to check for STIs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because you might not have any other discharge. As common as gonorrhea, chlamydia, and trichomoniasis, trichomonas, vaginalis, as common as they are, mm -hmm. uh, about half the women that have it don't even know that they have it because wow. there's no symptom. So when you when you see the dis your discharge being yellow, go out, go for an STI yes. test, and it's quite common. Okay, yes. thank you, PHC hand. <laughs> PHC hand has taken my life. <laughs> <laughs> Are we able to still continue? If if, if you uh, don't know. let me see. Right. Let me see if I can look for a light source. Uh, but but I'll still ask you a question while you are moving around, if you don't mind. Okay, yeah, sure. Okay, so we've talked about, you know, the color. What about the smells? Because that's something the that smells. is always 
things. There's always someone telling you to yeah. add something so was... to make your vagina smell better or smell yeah. sexier or smell sweet or perfumey. Um, yeah. What 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 does a normal vagina even smell like? Smell That's like the discharge okay. coming from a normal normal discharge. What does it smell like? What does abnormal smell like? Okay, so <laughs> before I go to the normal smell of the vagina, you should also know that there's one color I didn't talk about here, yeah? and that's the oh, grayish okay. color. So the grayish mm-hmm. color is also like a red flag when you see grayish vaginal discharge. It's mm-hmm. also like a red flag. And this is the best I can do for light. I can't find my thoughts light. It's light here. Okay, so we all understand. <laughs> so yeah, um, the grey discharge can be associated with, with well, not an STI, but it can be associated with, um, um, you know, bad um, feminine practices, you know. Okay. So yeah, but I'll talk about that much later. Thank God for light. Yay. So, <laughs> Yeah. So, <laughs> so um, you talked about the normal vaginal smell. The normal vaginal smell is uh, mildly, slightly acidic. So, you know, it, some, some, some vaginas, well, no, sometimes there's no smell at all, yeah? But when it has smell to be slightly acidic because of the pH of our vagina, our vagina has an acidic pH. That's why we have like a normal vaginal smell slightly acidic it's not an offensive smell you get so it's not an offensive smell just slightly acidic or no smell at all so when it becomes anything other than that then you you want to see a doctor you you know you can be worried about it the vagina doesn't smell like roses it doesn't smell like lavender so <laughs> if nature wanted it to smell like uh, like lavender roses strawberries there would have been something the... added there you know <laughs> you get it so i mean it's normal you don't have to you know get all of those feminine washes to make the vagina smell a certain type of way because in the end you'll probably be doing more harm than good, good. so personally i feel like those companies marketing feminine products are making a ton of money hurting women's health and seeing as exactly exactly what what about what about even like the area around the vagina smelling versus not the the vagina itself smelling so um maybe a vagina smelling of pee for example what would you advise someone to do rinse wash your vagina your vulva wash your vulva with water so here's the thing vulva, baby. some people <laughs> <laughs> yeah so some people sweat more than others yeah down there and they might need more than water to like really get the dirt out of the place the sweat you know and all of those things out of mm. the vulva area so in that case if you must use a soap then you use like unscented soaps you know you use like really mild unscented soaps and you're washing just around the vulva you're not going inside you're not at any point putting your fingers inside the vagina okay interesting all right ah now (laughs) what about the fertility aspects do you want to speak to that okay so yeah or do you want to come back to the gray the gray one you said you were going to talk to later. Oh, yes, that's true. The smell. So when you have like a gray vaginal discharge, it's usually associated with like a fishy smell. So when you have that gray vaginal discharge and a fishy smell, is most likely bacterial vaginosis. And that's mm-hmm. usually as a result of using soaps to wash inside of your vagina, even your vulval area. And you know, using all those feminine washes, wipes, and all of those things. So the idea is that your normal soaps that you use to, you know, bathe, like they are designed for the pH of your skin. 
you know mm. and and that's like about the ph is about 5.5 which is tending towards alkaline yeah and then when you use that to wash your vulval area or inside your vagina then you are distorting the normal ph of your vagina and that could cause that good bacteria that is there acting as a soldier protecting your vagina to you know reduce in the number that it is supposed to be there normally and then cause the bad bacteria to multiply and when the bad bacteria multiplies it's you start presenting with um, um fishy odor grayish or yellowish discharge you know because now you have to treat an yourself infection. for mm. an infection so to be clear yeah. that fishy odor is a clear sign that something is wrong that's yes. not ever a good order. It shouldn't be no. mistaken but at any time. No? At all. <laughs> at all. <laughs> all right. Uh, so the gray, you, the gray is indicative of bacterial vaginosis, but nothing else. Nothing likes it more dangerous than that. No, because no, no, gray no. sounds it's like crazy. black and it sounds like <laughs> something dangerous yeah. might be going on. Right. Yeah, it's, it's, it's most likely bacterial vaginosis. So you talked about washing inside the vagina. How yeah. do people do that? Why do people do that? Should they continue? Basically, okay, what so behaviors people... should women do when it comes to keeping the vagina healthy? healthy. And we'll come back to okay. fertility next. Okay. So some people go as far as douching. That's D-O-U-C-H-I-N-G. So some people go as far as douching. And douching is like using a rubber a rubber like um tube that has like a nozzle you know the nozzle is like a it's like this it's like a hollow it has like a space inside so what they do is they put in that nozzle all the way up into the vagina and they use the the bulb under it that is really rubber like and flexible they squirt the water up inside the vagina most times they've mixed the water with something you know this as in the i the the idea behind like I'm telling you the idea behind like washing that but the obsession behind with washing inside like the vagina is crazy. So I'm like when they do that, they are washing out, you know, they they are making that place more alkaline. They're distorting the normal pH of that particular area, that's the vagina. Mm -hmm. And then they are coming down with infection and they're wondering, but I wash my vagina often. You know, I, 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 I <laughs> That's really exactly clean. the problem. <laughs> exactly. Not knowing that it's the problem. It's like a hygiene paradox. You know, when you, <laughs> you wash and then you get infection instead of the other way around, yeah, right. you know. Wow. So, uh, Okay, yeah. so leave the vagina alone. That's the morale here. <laughs> yeah. Fertility. What can you okay. tell women when it comes to... We've, we've talked about at least being able to detect when you are fertile, the sticky mucus. What can you yeah. tell women when it comes to their vaginal health and fertility? What's, what's your advice around that topic? Okay, so if I'm getting your question right, are you asking me how it can affect fertility or... Are we going back to talking about the best time? No, how it can have. affect. How it can affect. Okay. Okay, so how it can affect fertility basically is, like I said, when you have like the yellowish greenish discharge, yeah, it can signify, it can indicate that there's a sexually transmitted um, infection going on. And then if that is left untreated or if that mm. is improperly treated, mm. it can progress it can ascend, the infection can ascend all the way into the womb and into the fallopian tubes. And when this happens, we call it pelvic inflammatory disease, PID. Okay. I mean, most people are more familiar with the word PID than even the <laughs> pelvic what inflammatory disease. Yeah. So when it happens that way, remember that these, these sexually transmitted infections are mostly... Um, asymptomatic there's no symptoms at all so even when you when even when the infection goes all the way when it ascends all the way into the womb and the fallopian tube you can you can still not have any symptoms hmm. you get and then when you don't have symptoms you, you're not treating it you're not going to 
you know, to the doctor, and then it's there. What it's doing in your tubes is that it is irritating your tubes. And as it's irritating your tubes, at some point, it's causing scarring. Like, you know, when you have a wound, you know, the scars, yeah. So it's causing scarring of the tubes. And then at some point, the tubes, you know, fuse together, like something we call adhesion. So it fuses together. And, you know, you remember that when, the, when you're ovulating, your ovary is releasing the egg into that tube, and then the sperm is going all the way to the tube to go and fertilize the egg. But there's so roadblock. The tube, exactly. <laughs> if it down. is blocked, <laughs> then the sperm cannot reach the egg, and then fertilization cannot happen. And then you're worried about how, why, why you're not getting pregnant, not knowing that there's a particular infection that you've had for years and you've not treated it, you know. And then sometimes it could be like too late, if, I, if I'm allowed to use that word, but, you know, never mm -hmm. say never. But then, you know, it's could, the tubes could have been blocked at the point, and then that's why the sperm is not, be, is not actually able to swim all the way to the egg to fertilize the egg. And sometimes this carrying that happens in the tube, yeah, it's, the tubes might, might actually fuse together, but not completely. So sometimes the sperm manages to escape through the areas that are still open and then fertilize, to go and fertilize the egg at the end of the tube. And then when it fertilizes the egg at the end of the tube, remember that that embryo, because embryo is what is the result of the sperm fertilizing the egg. Mm -hmm, That's that mm -hmm. baby that you're looking for, yes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So when the, when the fertilization has occurred and then the embryo has to travel in that same tube back in, as in, into the womb to go and implant and then grow. But because of the, the distorted tube, you know, mm. the embryo is finding it difficult to mm. um, travel through the tube oh, wow. and normally it's supposed to travel for like five days and then go yes, and implant in the womb on the sixth seventh eighth ninth tenth day so you see it sometimes on the sixth day it's still in the womb because the distorted tube is not allowing it pass as pass. smoothly as it's supposed wow. to yes and then the oh, embryo then the embryo yeah, the embryo, the embryo can now implant on the tube. And unfortunately, you know, you know, see, there's a way nature works, you know. The, 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 the womb is, is, has like these thick muscles, you know, that allows for an embryo to actually grow. So the, the womb can stretch enough, you know, to grow a baby for nine months. But the tube mm -hmm. cannot. So when this embryo implants on the fallopian tube, at about nine weeks because it's growing and growing and growing in the fallopian tube so at about nine weeks it's most likely rupture so it like bursts ruptures and then you're having what we call like an ectopic pregnancy oh, wow. and then you're worried about oh, why you have an ectopic pregnancy you know sometimes it's as a result of you know, an infection that you did not treat in the past that caused carrying of the tubes and this is not the only cause of an ectopic pregnancy here, but because we are talking about vaginal discharge, I'm talking about the association of vaginal discharge With and ectopic, ectopic pregnancy. Yeah. Yeah. So that's how it can wow. affect your fertility, basically. So you're saying someone can let it go from, I have a yellow discharge, I ignore it, to eventually having blocked tubes? Yes. PID and potentially yes. um, infertility. Yeah, infertility. Amazing. Yeah. So the vaginal discharge is something to be monitored, I guess, or regularly or not taken for granted anyway. Yeah, just don't take it for granted. Make sure you observe your vaginal discharge. You know, if you just notice that it's a different color from your normal then you should go for an STI testing if you are sexually active. You should go see your doctor, you know, for further tests like, you know, a high vaginal swab or an endocervical swab or whatever swab test that you are. Or even blood test as well because, I mean, you know. So uh, now coming to the subject of STI tests, you've mentioned many times that they are not, um, when it comes to sexually transmitted infections, you guys have what STI means. 
um, not every time will you even have any symptoms. Meaning, you are saying the vaginal discharge might stay normal, even though someone has a symptom in some cases. In, in yeah, in a few cases, yes, the vaginal discharge will will be normal, but most times it might just be the vaginal discharge that will that will change, but nothing else. You might not have any change. other no itching, no yes. pain. Okay. No itching, awesome. no pain, no nothing. So as a result of that term, like asymptomatic, is do you re do you recommend that people only wait for a change in their vaginal discharge before they go for STI testing? Or should this be something they do regularly? Well, if you are someone that has like, you're sexually active and you, ha you have multiple sexual partners, definitely go for regular testing, STI testing. If you have just one partner, but you have uh, unprotected sexual intercourse, go for regular testing. Because I mean, let's not forget that um human papilloma your, virus or your boo can have to, a boo your boo can have a boo <laughs> and even though even when your boo doesn't have a boo <laughs> he probably had boos before you and he could he could also be asymptomatic and at the same time remember that the human papilloma virus doesn't really affect the men yeah right. so it affects the women and More. we should never forget that HPV is also a sexually transmitted infection because it's really easy to forget that. Yeah. Right. Interesting. So just for those who are aware um, or who are not aware, at least but we have a bouquet of STI tests. Um, it includes the vaginal, high vaginal swab and other tests. And it's only 10,000 Naira. It, irrespective of where you are in Nigeria, it's the same price, fortunately. So we'd like to encourage everyone, like you can't always wait for symptoms. The discharge might not, you might even ignore it. Maybe you saw it and you forgot. Or there might be no other symptom to like bother you. Just go for routine testing. If like Dr. Amarachi said, if you have um, unprotected sex with either one or more partners, just do what's right by your body and go for regular testing. Okay. Uh, do you? I, I have a funny question to ask, then I'll throw it to the crowd. If you guys have any questions, please uh, drop your questions now so we can ask it. So, uh, because we get a lot of people who say, I'm a virgin, but I've had anal sex or um, oral sex, but I'm a virgin. So, I always use the term vaginal virgin because, yes, I have to differentiate um yeah is it possible for someone who has gotten an sti from either anal sex or oral sex is it possible for that sti to somehow affect their um their you know female reproductive tract and cause infertility or is it separate okay so well this the question is not really straightforward so i'm going to try to answer that so here's the thing yeah when you have anal STI, you can also have vaginal STI, but it's not that you must have vaginal STI when you have anal STI. It's just that sometimes, yes, you can, because it depends on how the activity is going. So if you are having um, anal sex, and then somehow your fingers find your way from the south to the north, you know, yes, it can. You can transfer the anal STI to the vagina, to the vagina, and then if you're having oral sex and with somebody that has an STI, you know, and the person has oral STI and the person, you know, the activity goes all the way to the vagina from the mouth, then yes, it could affect the vagina and cause vaginal STI as well. So it has, there has to be like a mode of transmission to the vagina to affect it. Okay. okay. So are there no exceptions maybe of some STIs that can actually pass through the bloodstream and still cause damage irrespective of where they actually came in from? Yes, yes, it's possible because, okay. you know, some of these sexually transmitted infections affect not just the reproductive organ. They affect like other organs in the body, even the eyes, hmm. some of them go as far as affecting like yeah. so 
Yes, like syphilis. So if they are left untreated and then they start, you know, spreading all over, of course it can affect the reproductive organs. Okay, so noted. Whether you are a vaginal virgin or not, just know that yeah. it's safe. It's good to still practice safe sex because it can still pass through your body or possibly get transmitted during um, sex at some point into your vagina. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I will take two questions that people have dropped. So one is um, about how to know if you're ovulating. So you mentioned okay. the discharge, but is there any other thing they should look out for? How can one know if they are ovulating? Okay. So the this is what I tell my patients here. The only 100% way of knowing that you're ovulating is by getting pregnant. That's the only way. <laughs> only hundred percent way. <laughs> but I know, since I know that that's yes, <laughs> since I know that that's not what you're asking, and you want to know the other less than sixty percent ways of knowing that you're ovulating is by buying an over-the-counter ovulation kit. So what the kit does is that it tests, you know, checks you for if you your progesterone is high. That is a hormone that. When you release the egg, that hormone is increased in your blood. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, so it tells you that, oh, you just ovulated. But sometimes, <laughs> you know, you could rupture that follicle and then no egg comes out. But, you know, it's still, the, the hormone is still going to be really high, in heightened, increased. And then you think that, oh, an egg came out at this point. So it's not it's not me trying to discourage, it's me trying to be really practical and realistic and telling you like numbers, giving you statistics, giving you numbers. Because a lot of people just believe that when they have that thin, stretchy discharge, mm -hmm. automatically that's the egg. I've heard this so much that I'm oh, like, the egg has how is one. this the egg? <laughs> yes. <laughs> and they keep saying that this is the egg. And I'm in like a funny way. So, yeah, so it's really not the egg. It just gives you an idea that you have ovulated, really. Right, so it doesn't right. say that you have ovulated. It just gives you an idea that you have ovulated. And another way to find out is if you're checking your temperature, immediately you wake up every morning. The day you ovulate, it slightly increases by about 0 0.5 degrees Celsius. So that could give you an idea that you have ovulated that particular day. What, what if you yeah. have the, you are about to have malaria one day? <laughs> it will not be 0 0.5. It will not be on the dots. <laughs> it will not be that um, specific. That's, that's 0 0.5. Okay. Exactly. It be so, so those, those means aren't like, you know, very solid ways to check. Yes. Yeah. Another way to check is also going for um, ultrasound scan. So normally, like after your period, let me say, like, maybe a day after your period, you go and do an ultrasound scan. So what you're doing is you're checking for the follicle, you know, that it, that is growing. So you're going, like, every alternate day to see which particular one is growing bigger and bigger and bigger. How many so ultrasounds are we talking about? <laughs> exactly. It depends on your, on your cycle length. And your so budget. by the time, <laughs> yes. <laughs> So by the time that biggest follicle that you have seen, by the time you don't see it again, it means the follicle has ruptured and an egg has most likely, most likely an egg has come out. So of wow. all the means of all the means of checking, the ultrasound scan is actually the most accurate form of knowing whether you've ovulated but when i say most accurate i still don't mean it is 100 percent too but it's of all the other other ways that ultrasound scan is the most accurate but like i said the only way 100 percent way is by getting pregnant right. that's how you know that I'm <laughs> which unless that's the outcome you want error 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 so far let me Egg. start through <laughs> i want to quickly say hi to savvy doctor thanks for joining hi um, Hello. So, I'm going and to let me quickly say hi question. to Sugebi and Bisayo because they've been saying hi, hi, yes. hi since. Hi, yeah. everyone. <laughs> hi, now, everyone. Uh, oh, thanks for joining in. Go ahead, please. <laughs> yeah, I was just trying to, you know, appreciate everyone that oh. tuned in, that joined in, rather, right. to the live show. And they're really also sending their thanks right back. 
I think yeah. the number of complimentary comments. Somebody said that this is so interesting. Thank you. Aww, uh, I, I thank wish I had not said the person's name. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So um, someone has asked that can they book the SCI test via our app? Uh, we've created a link. Um, it's in our bio. Just go there, click on book appointments, and you'll be able to book the test easily. You can also send us a DM. So thank you, Dr. Amarachi. Do you have any closing words before we go? Mm, closing word, yeah. Um, tell a woman to tell a woman to tell a woman <laughs> that they should not wash their vagina, their vulva, with soap. Or rather, with scented soap, with perfumed is... soaps. Mm. And, mm. you know, educate the woman, educate a nation, just spread the word. And I hope you really, you really found this session informative. Yes, yes. I, I believe we all did. Thank you so very much for coming. Uh, we look forward to having you at that time. Yeah, right. me too. So bye, yeah. everyone. See you next bye. time. Bye. Yeah. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this video because I thoroughly enjoyed making it. I hope you found it informative. And if you want more content like this and you want to see more of my videos, click the subscribe button. Don't forget to turn on the notification bell below because when you do, YouTube notifies you whenever I post a video. Don't forget to like this video, share with your friends, share with any woman you know. Don't forget, educate a woman, educate a nation. See you in my next video.